Pillar Calc. It is Monday's uh, lesson and we have been working on Math League on, on the end of each week. So we have our third one this Friday. So I'll take this moment to tell you what to study. And we've been told that we are to look at exponential and logarithmic functions their derivatives. So if you would look at uh, expressions with exponentials and logs and remember how to take the derivative. An example would be like y equals e to the x to the fifth. So y prime, the derivative, would be e to the u du. So e to the x to the fifth times the derivative of x to the fifth, which is 5x to the fourth. All right, so just look over that kind of material. And then there is, these, these kind will show up in the middle of your work. There's a max min problem where you, they describe a scenario and ask you to find the maximum or minimum value. And they will have an exponential inside of the equation where you have to do that work. Let's see. If you would look over again the graphs of uh, f, f prime and f double prime to see how they relate to one another. What is happening to f prime when the graph is increasing, decreasing? What's happening to f double prime when the conca concavity is changing. And the rest of the things that they list for you to study for this test is trig functions as far as their derivatives go. So we've had those pop up enough that you're probably pretty good at those. All right. I think that's all I, I can recall for this next section that they allow me to say. <laughs> anyway, all right, so I hope that gives you a little bit of guidance. All right, the rest of our lesson then is going to take on a different twist. We are going to look at some limits that we were able to take in the past and then some that we weren't able to take in the past. So the ones that we were able to do They are ones like this. Suppose we're looking at the limit as x, as x goes to negative 1 of this expression. 2x squared minus 2 over x plus 1. All right, so when we took the limit, you recall the first thing is to always try is to put that number in for x and see if it comes out to a number. So if you do put negative 1 in here, you get Let's see, 2, when you put negative 1 in here, you get 2 times negative 1 squared, which is 2 minus 2 is 0, and then you get 0 on the bottom. So that flubbed, but we tried. So then we always bring out some al algebra, and usually it's factoring. So I see the top, I can pull out a 2, and then I have a difference of 2 squares on the top. x minus 1, x plus 1, and now can I take the limit as x approaches minus 1. 2 times minus 1 minus 1 is 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4. So a limit that we couldn't do initially became doable by rearrangement with algebra. And what else did we get fancy with in the past? I know, the limit as x approaches infinity. Suppose we have like 3x squared minus 1 over 2x squared plus 1. So if you put infinity into this, you get a very, very huge number, minus 1, over another huge number, plus 1. They're both infinite. So 
it didn't really work out by plugging infinity into anything. So the little trick we had was divide each one by the greatest power of the variable in the denominator, sometimes in the numerator, but usually the, the greatest power in the denominator. This one, they're the same. So x squared over x squared. And what's the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x squared and 1 over x squared. So then we have just a 3 over a 2. So we've seen that in the past as well. And what about this one? It sort of falls into one of these categories, I guess. But just to show you, we could use um, expressions with e in them. So as x goes to zero up here, we get two times we get two times zero. Oh, I'm, yeah, two times zero. That my I copied that wrong. Sorry. All right. To e to the two times zero is one minus one, and e to the zero is one. So we get zero over zero. So once again, that didn't work. So we're hoping algebra helps. This is actually a difference of two squares. Little trickier than the normal difference of two squares, but you'll check if you multiply e to the x times e to the x, you get e to the 2x. The middle terms drop out and negative 1, so it does factor that way. And it is helpful. Now we take the limit as x goes to 0 on this term, and e to the 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. All right. So we've seen little tricks up our sleeve to get through some of them. What I'm going to teach you tonight is another one, and it's a very useful one. So look how closely this problem is to this one except for the denominator. So what if we take the limit as x goes to 0 of this? Well, now we get e to the 0, which is 1, minus 1, and then 0. So that didn't work. But there's no algebra that I can, re I can factor that like this, but it won't reduce with the x in the bottom. So. This is what I'm going to teach you tonight. There's a theorem, and it's called L'Hopital. It's French. You need to write it out in its entirety in your comp book this very day. L'Hopital sort of looks like L'El Hospital. It doesn't have an S in it, though. But that's how I remember it. L'Hopital without the S. Hospital without the S. All right, so the time that we're going to use L'Hopital's theorem is in examples like that one I just had. So, and so let me explain what qualifies for the use of L'Hopital. All right, so we saw this one. We came to a dead end. So we're going to come back and do this one after we learn L'Hopital's theorem. Let f and g be differentiable on the open interval a, b. a, b contains c And in parentheses, um, F and G may possibly not be inter be differentiable at C itself. 
So let f and g be differentiable on a the open interval a to b. A to b a to b contains c. And I just want to qualify that f and g may possibly not be differentiable at c itself. So when I say f and g is differentiable on a b, maybe not at this particular interest point of interest c. All right. So if the limit as x approaches c, remember c is that special number that I have between a and b, and it might, the function is differentiable everywhere in that interval except maybe not at c. So if the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x equals 0 over 0, or that's what it equaled in the example we started, infinity over infinity, or negative infinity over positive infinity, or positive infinity over negative infinity, or guess what I'm going to say next? Negative infinity over negative infinity. So basically I think of it in my head, zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. But it's one, two, three, four, these five cases. If that limit equals one of these forms, these indeterminate forms, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x equals the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x over g prime of f prime of x over g prime of x. This is hugely helpful and we'll see why in a minute. I'm going to come back because I'm just about out of video time for part one. So see you in part two.